Well, welcome in just for a little bit of pregame practice here for any of our NWHL fans who are already on the Twitch stream as we have a guest in, Marissa and Jemmy, who I'm sure many Boston fans will know. First of all, it's great to have you back. We know you've had a busy season with the Bruins, but back here covering the NWHL and uh, going to be covering quite a few Pride home games here. Yeah, I always love coming here and seeing the Boston Pride in my fourth year coming to games, so... Always happy to be here. We'll be at as many games as I can. And, yeah, it's been kind of crazy already to start an NHL season. It's been five games already, which is unreal. So kind of nice to take a step back and get to see the pride finally. And even though you weren't here able to see it in person, a very convincing 4-2 win for the pride yesterday. Just really looked solid in every aspect of the game. But um, I think you would be in agreement. Definitely expect some bounce back from um, the Buttes going into the, today's game because they're still a very tough team. We're really able to find their footing in the latter half of that third period. So I think whether you have Fuji Magari starting off of a 42 save effort the day before, or even if you get Newman in there, they're going to be a team who's really looking out for some revenge today. And Buffalo's historically played so well against Boston, too. That's a really good rivalry, and there's still a, quite a few players on Buffalo who have been a part of that rivalry the past couple of years. They've knocked him out of the playoffs the past three years, so there's definitely always going to be that competitiveness. But yeah, so far so good for the Pride. Their offense looks very deep. They bring back as many players as anyone else in the league. And what's important for them too is their blue line and how secure they are on defense. When their offense is working from their defense, that's when they're most effective. And they have that corpse there that has that chemistry that's been together. So it's not surprising that Boston's gotten off to such a good start, but it's always going to be competitive when Buffalo's here. And that Buffalo blue line, again, a lot of new players on it. You don't have um, the likes anymore of a lot of their all-star players they lost last season, but especially looking to last night. Sheriff, players like Marie and Joe Peltier with their sacrifices, especially defensively, and just not being afraid to fire every single shot they possibly can to get traffic and pucks in front of the net. I think that would be a key to the Butte strategy going into today. Do a lot of what Boston did last night. Get pucks to the net, have players ready to keep up those screens, get those rebounds when they do come out from the pad saves. For sure. Pelletier, as you mentioned, too, she was a captain for UNH. She had an excellent career. Actually, teammates with Carly Taves on the Boston Pride as well. They played together with the Wildcats. So, yeah, Pelletier is a good addition to Buffalo. But, yeah, you're right. And you want to challenge the goalies, right? The Pride have two rookie goalies this season. Uh, they had that situation last year with Katie Burt as well, and she proved herself. But now, if you're Buffalo, you want to challenge the goalies. You want to put pucks on net and see how the Pride respond to that. And looking at the natives on this team, you have uh, so many Massachusetts natives, so many of these girls who have um, played time in both Hockey East or ECAC around the area. And especially going back to last year, looking at a couple of players on the Pride, McKenna Brand, we saw her with uh, Denise Shishova, the former Northeastern teammates, and how good of a chemistry they've had. But I think that new chemistry has been established between her, Jillian Dempsey. We saw the like of Lexi Lang and Carly Tapes combined for at least three points each last night. So it doesn't necessarily have to be those college teammates getting the chemistry going. Right. It's just about managing those good lines. And I think the pride all the way down to even their third pairing has really put together a solid combination of forwards. I'm excited to see what Lang does this year, too, overall. I'm really excited to see what she does this season. Obviously scored last night. And, yeah, McKenna Brand, too, she's someone who could take a big leap this season, especially in an NWHL where there aren't so many players have left, and she's going to be relied on so much more for his pride team. So Easily my pick for breakout player of the season. I think maybe for the majority of the NWHL. Too, like just the chemistry with her and Dempsey. The, I mean, chemistry is so important in a year like this where there are some players who have left. So Dempsey and Brand were teammates last year. They've played together. They have some of that chemistry there. And obviously two of the most dynamic players in the league, especially Dempsey, historically in the NWHL. But, yeah, for her playing with um, McKenna Brand, I expect a big year from Brand overall just because she looked so good as a rookie. Now she's, she's seen the speed of the game at the pro level. She's seen the pace, and she can only get better from here. And just going through my notes, it looks like, by my count, six players who were – captains for their collegiate teams on the Boston Pride coming in here and a lot of them from that New England area but like we talked about last night the addition of Emily Fluke I know you got to speak with her a little bit transferring over here and uh, being acquired by this Boston team she's a native she's loved playing this arena and she seemed to definitely have a good spring in her step coming in last night for her first game as a member of the Pride in this building. 
Well, she did a lot for the Pride, just her presence here. And you look at when she's in Connecticut, she's kind of relied on to be that top scorer. She was definitely the top player there. She doesn't have to worry about that here because Jillian Dempsey is there and McKenna Brand is there. So Fluke can really sit back and just let her game evolve a little bit more. She had two great years, especially her rookie year. She burst onto the scene and then was very strong again with DeWale last season. But now she's in a role where she can just play at her best and she, she doesn't have to just totally do a lot of it herself. And turning to the special teams, that's one stat that has really glared out to me so far for the Boston Pride. They will enter this game looking to break a pretty long 0 for streak, already 0 for 9 on the man advantage going into this game. What do you do from a coaching standpoint to really try to fix that besides an approach of just kind of getting back to basics and trying to cycle the puck more effectively with your passing? It's a type of thing where once they score once, they should be fine. They're going to start to feel a lot better. and things can kind of go from there. The fact that they have Fluke now, she should help. She's a good power play player. She also draws a lot of penalties as well, so she can help them get more opportunities. But adding her to that power play is just going to make them more dynamic and tougher. But yeah, the Pride have had some power play issues the past couple of seasons, which is hard to believe for how much talent they've had over all the past few years. But it's definitely an area where they've struggled a bit. But yeah, I think adding Fluke is probably the best thing that can happen to that power play. And just looking at a couple of numbers here. We thank all of our fans for being with us here so early. We know we also have a um, game going on between the Minnesota Wild and the Metropolitan Riveters. A very lopsided game last time out, 9-2, to two, a Minnesota victory yesterday. And we promised from uh, last night also we've definitely gotten the choppiness fixed uh, so far with the video stream. Still working out a couple of those Twitch kinks, but getting it under control. But let's turn more to the Buffalo Buttes now. Going into this game, 1-1-0 on the season. This is their first of nine games against the Boston Pride, dating back to last year, like you mentioned. Definitely a thorn in the side of the Pride, and we're actually the first victory for them in last year's playoffs on their way to getting to that Isabel Cup final, which they did ultimately lose in overtime to the Minnesota Whitecaps. And I think the Pride might have taken exception to that last season and really want to get off on the right footing here against an early opponent that you're going to be seeing so many times. Well, yeah, it's been the past three years, too. They knocked him out. Of, they beat them in the Isabel Cup three years ago. Correct. And then two years ago when the Pride had a real down season and kind of rebounded late in the year, go up to Buffalo, take them to overtime in their own building, and look like they're primed for the upset buffalo ends up winning that game and then last year of course as well so there's a lot of history between these two teams probably more than any other two nwhl teams so anytime you have kind of that rivalry going on the quality of play is going to be excellent and turning to that quality of play just the buffalo lineup up and down you have to look at the two slovaks they're actually the first two in league history to be starting for this team, Lanka Kermova and Iveta Klimasova, both of them playing in multiple world tournaments, actually, for Slovakia. And both of them were really challenging the net front presence, especially yesterday. They're two big bodies, and I think that the, the Buttes are especially going to be looking for them in the form of Green Bowie to get a lot of passes towards them and really try to step up that Buttes offensive game. Historically, too, the way Buffalo's offense has worked is they're such a physical team. They hit teams off or they knock teams off the puck as much as they can and really just establish their possession game and they're able to get underneath defenses and get in front of the goal. So that's just historically how their offense works and it's given the pride fits over the past couple of years as well, the way they've been able to get underneath defenses. But yeah, they're a tough team to play against. Even now, still, you mentioned Corinne Bowie being there, too. She's a veteran of this league. She kind of matches uh, the Pride Jillian Dempsey almost as far as just having that veteran forward and former member of the Pride herself as well, just kind of adding to that rivalry, too. And so now looking to your career specifically, you've managed to start a full women's hockey notebook within the Boston Herald doing a lot of great writing about just uh, the NWHL and women's hockey in general. That's got to make you feel good that such a major publication has taken such a big step to uh, kind of improve the quality of coverage for women's hockey. Oh, yeah.
Yeah, it's great. I'm so appreciative that I'm able to still be able to come to these games when I knew I was going to end up on a full-time NHL beat. My, one of my biggest concerns was not being able to be around women's hockey. So it's great that uh, they're so receptive and so interested in covering the sport. And I love that I get to be at these games still. I get to go to some road games as well and see the pride as much as possible. And yeah, I, I, I'm happy with the coverage so far on bostonherald.com. Please subscribe <laughs> for uh, women's hockey coverage. Um, but yeah, women's hockey notebook every week, pride game stories as much as possible, uh, feature or two every week or every other week or so. So yeah, it's great just getting to be around and getting to still cover the team where I really kind of started out covering teams. And certainly 12 home games increased from last year. So we definitely encourage the fans to come out here, read up on the NWHL as well, come out and see these players. But turning to the game itself, finally, um, before we let you go here, just your three keys for both of these teams that you think will be critical to victory. Well, for Buffalo, again, if they play physical, they can knock teams off the puck. Uh, that always challenges the pride. Get underneath the defense, get in front of the goal mouth, and then just put pucks on that. Put pu again, rookie goaltenders, you want to challenge as much as possible. In Buffalo, they've never shied away from shooting. So I guess that's for them and for the pride. Emily Fluke in her second game now is the pride. How does she look? How is she more acclimated? Being a back-to-back, -back, that's all. I mean, we see a lot of back-to-backs in this league, but it's always challenging, especially a day game after a night game as well. Do they have their legs? How do they look? And then the power play, like we talked about, it hasn't been good for a couple of years now. How do they do they get on the board? How do they respond? How do they continue to improve that player advantage? Well, it's going to be a fun one to watch here at 2.30 in the afternoon, streaming live on Twitch TV, NWHL to the channel. We thank Marissa and Gemma in Jemmy for joining us and uh, we you. certainly hope you'll be back to talk some more NWHL hockey in the games to come but for now we will let the players continue with our warm-ups make sure you join us when the puck drops at 2.30. Thank you. And welcome in fans of NWHL hockey to the second game of this weekend on a Sunday afternoon between the home team the Boston Pride and the Buffalo Buttes. I'm Sam Fryman with you here on Twitch TV. Erica Ayala alongside me and Erica yesterday we saw a game in which the Boston Pride simply took it to the Buffalo Buttes and despite some very strong play from Buffalo's goaltender Maria Fujimagari the Pride able to get the job done a 4 to win but for most of the game it was really four nothing near four to one boston their goals coming courtesy of lexi lang carly taves both of them getting their first professional goals as well as christina putinia adding one as well but this is the afternoon this is an immediate turnaround and the buttes i think they're going to be looking for some revenge absolutely you know i was able to speak with captain kareem Bowie earlier and you know she's very encouraged by the team that she has they just um, are going to have to shake that one off and come out today ready to play especially knowing that they have their home opener next weekend so they want to get off to the right foot going into that have some momentum as far as the pride we were able to speak with Lexi Lang and with Tori Sullivan but I thought what Sullivan said was really indicative of how the pride played compared to the, that game against the Riveters Tori Sullivan said that the team was focused on coming out fast and strong using their speed using their strength and essentially sam that's exactly what we saw yesterday yeah how many times did we see especially off of the counter rush the pride just take away those big stretch passes and immediately go back down ice the other way a big key to why they were able to win yesterday's contest but it is a new game as the players go to their respective red lines waiting to be introduced here but going down to what we talked about with a couple um of those pride players really applying the speed game as we get the starting lineups here of course the captain kareem Bowie going to be on that starting lineup and i think another thing we heard from the pride players is that they had a lot of respect for what fujimagari was able to do what mariah fujimagari was able to do and they know that they're not going to get lucky necessarily with her in net so they're going to have to really stay sharp and that her team is not going to want to, you know, give up as many goals as they did, especially knowing that they were able to get two back. And off of that 42 save performance last night, Mariah Fujimagari will go back to back in this game. So certainly something the Buttes have to be comfortable with having her in the cage once again.
I love it when the honorary captain is a goalie. That's just great. <laughs> And it looks like the Boston Pride going to start out with that uh, trio that was really effective for him in the last game. That line of Lexi Lang, Tori Sullivan, and presumably Carly Taves here. Correct on cue. And the Buttes goaltender going back to back as well. We'll see if that's the case with Lavisa Salander. Sounds like Kaylee Fratkin has some of the youngsters that she coaches in the stands this afternoon. And Lavisa Solander will also go back to back for the Pride in the net. And Kaylee Fratkin definitely with some fans right below us and obviously being a BU graduate, also certainly some friends who would make a pretty short drive here off the mass turnpike to Warrior Ice Arena. Rendition of the anthem over. And teams set to play some hockey here this afternoon at Warrior Ice Arena. Boston's going to start skating from our left to our right. Buttes the opposite end right to left. And again, I think we're in for a very good goaltending battle with the two who were on it last game in the cage again, Lavisa Solander and Maria Fujimagari. Indeed, it will be a, a pretty good matchup again. I know you and I, Sam, talked about how we thought Pucci McGarry probably got uh, robbed as far as not making that one of the three stars yesterday. Let's see if she takes exception to that as much as I am. <laughs> and we will say quickly to our viewers, we are definitely thankful we got the choppiness worked out of the video feed last night. Unfortunately, we will not have graphics to go with today, but uh, we're going to do this old school, radio style, no graphics on the board. But we will let you know about all the power plays, all the times, everything that may be up there on the scoreboard. As we again look at the starting line combinations for the Boston Pride, it's going to, going to be that forward line that was so effective for their last game of number 16, Lexi Lang, number 9, Tori Sullivan, and number 26, Carly Taves. Both Lang and Taves scoring their first career professional goals last night. And on the back end, helping them defend will be number 13, Kaylee Fratkin, as well as Mallory Soliotis, Lavisa Solander, Annette. And up front for the Buffalo Buttes, their big veterans, Kareen Bowie, Taylor Kersey, as well as Becky Bowering. But a good afternoon crown on here. Fans are ready, teams are ready, puck hits the sheet, and we are underway for game number two of the weekend. Pride control off of the opening faceoff, entering the zone. Carly Taves on the right wing, sends it right into the middle for Sullivan. Couldn't get a good forehand shot off, and the Buttes will try to clear. That was really their Achilles heel last night, just not being able to get out of their own zone quickly or effectively, allowing the Pride to just cycle shots at will as that one goes for an early offside call. Already I think you're seeing that Buffalo is not wanting the Pride to get comfortable in their offensive zone at all and they're being more aggressive. What we said we wanted to see from them last night, I think early returns are that they have taken notes and are going to be aggressive in this game. 
And this faceoff actually gets pushed back all the way into the pride end of the ice. Buffalo quickly trying to go after it, but Lexi Bender will touch up first for the Boston Pride, try to get it out. Held in at the blue line there and trying to be sent down low by Bustead. Can't quite get it to one of her Buffalo teammates, but a much more forward progression of defense as a Kersey picks up that one, sends it right into the middle, winding up a slap shot when ready for it was Bowie, but couldn't get the shot off. I think a hair too late there as Bowie, uh, you know, got hemmed in there or it was, you know, pinched in by the defense of the Pride. And she gets a stretch pass that was intended for Brooke Stacy. But Boston onto the puck now. They're at the near side. Carly Taves trying to turn away from Stacy and send it up the half wall. Only gets it to the body there. And now at the far side, Emily Fluke, one of the newest Pride members, trying to get it out and taking it up is Mary Parker. She's got a one-on-one or possibly a two-on-one. If Wolfiler hurries, she drags that puck around, but a good defensive play there made by Peltier, and the Buttes will go back in transition. Klimasova over the blue line. McPherson gets the rebound out to the top of the slot, firing a shot that went off of the shoulder, it looks like, of Dempsey as another rebound goes in on Solander. So the Buttes definitely quick to the attack here in the opening minute and a half. And racing back in, McKenna Brand trying to go forehand, backhand, and she scores! Terrific speed along the left wing for McKenna Brand. And she gets the Buttes on the, I'm sorry, the pride on the board. Just a minute, 45 into this game, 1-0 yellow team. McKenna Brand is one of those players that we said looked like she was itching for a goal, and she starts off on the same cue this afternoon, Mariah Fujimagari looked like she saw that puck, but is just able to slide through that five hole. And even I barely thought it squeezed through the pads until I saw Brand celebrating as the Pride quickly go right back to work and right at the side of the goal, trying to punch away at it there was Putinia. And Jillian Dempsey, the captain, the lone assist credit there. Just a minute 45 into the game, the Pride have a one nothing lead. And we'll look to take control now. Taking it up ice, a good stretch pass to Sullivan. Can't quite get there along the left wing. Taken away by Sheriff. Neutral zone, the battleground. Pass intended for Lexi Lang now. Intercepted by Bowering. Can't get much further beyond the good blue line. And again, the pride in the attacking zone. Sullivan trying to turn there. And lost control of the puck. But first going to take it back up. And again, this body-on-body -body defense that I were applying last game, still cutting off those Buffalo passes as one goes for an icing call there. Absolutely. We know that hockey at this level is definitely physical, and we see bodies being banged around left and right. It's a matter of how the Buttes essentially are going to be able to handle the physicality, and if they're going to be able to dish any back, Sam, and a face-off one, Boston going to try to rim it around to the near side. Now gets it to center, racing after it, trying to cancel out. Icing there is Lexi Lang, and she will do so. Good hustle for the skates there by number 16. And behind the net, Buffalo going to try to take it out. They get it to the near side. And Tave Strong on the fourth check, just held in by Soliotis. Tried to get a redirect, and almost did so by both the likes of Lang and Sullivan. This line continuing the great work they had yesterday. Lang again behind the net, trying to get some help from Taves as Boston still maintains control of the puck. 16.42 to go now in period number one. Pride with an early lead. Still stapled against the end wall there. Butte's able to take it out in the form of Bowering. She gets it into the middle for a Kersey. We're trying to flip it up the wing, and here's Bowie again with a quick slap shot seen all the way by the glove of Solander, and she will hold it. And much more aggressive in the counter rush. That speed game, the Buttes are applying it well. Yes, absolutely. Maybe it was just a matter of, uh, I don't know if it was travel or just some um, lethargic feed and, and whatnot, heavy legs. But the Buttes looking much better this afternoon. And a high shot by Bussad goes well wide of the net. Boston able to pick it up, and here they go in transition. Emily Fluke from the right ring now cuts into the middle. Lexi Bender tried to knife her way through a couple people in the low slot but couldn't get control of the puck. Now she takes position back at the point. And Kelly going down low. She fires a shot right into the gut of Fuji Magari. She'll hold. And we'd like to thank everyone following along on Twitch TV as we bring you the second game of this weekend, uh, this home opening weekend for the Boston Pride. And a line changes. They will go to the Dempsey-Brand-Putinia line, the top line for the Boston Pride off of this faceoff. 
And Dempsey going to be taking it. Can't win it from McPherson. Utes to control the puck. And as we're just over four minutes through period number one, Fry try to work it up the right wing. Here's the goal scorer, McKenna Brand. From her right wing, halts there at the half wall, sends it farther down low to Putinia, but can't maintain control of the puck. And now into the middle, Dempsey tries to get to it. Recovered by Rayel. Rayel lost it on the half wall. She was double teamed there by a couple of Buttes players, and it goes all the way back down into the far end of the ice. And Brand avoids a big hit there as one player going down and losing her stick. That was Gian. And Pride will go back the other way. Good tap pass to Rail. Halts at the circle now. Tries to feed it into the center, but too many blue jerseys clogging up that middle lane. And Whitney Wren looking to take it back out. Five minutes through period number one. And it's behind the Buffalo net. Again, struggling to clear out. Lexi Lang good on the forward check. Again, preventing a Buffalo clearing attempt. Carly Taves now watching Bowering. But she will look to get help from one of her teammates. Sends it farther to Brown. And really being pushed to the corners are the Buttes players right now, which is a good defensive strategy because then you're forced to rim it around the wall where players can easily get in deep and stop that pass from getting much beyond the neutral zone. That was effective for Boston last night. Now it's a matter of how is the the Buttes team going to be able to counter and maybe put some pressure on themselves when they are on the defensive end. And they keep it in the blue line right now as a Kersey tried to do so. Almost got some help from her teammate Skarbowski. As she skates back into her own end just a tad. Sullivan on the forecheck. Buttes again trying to get it up along those walls. Again taken away by the Boston Pride. Big stretch pass. Wolfiler's going to try to cancel it out as well as Mary Parker. She gets two in the corner. Deflection. That was almost gotten there by Wolfiler from Parker. But Fujimagari covers with the glove. 13.56 to go now in the period. And again, early we see it's Mariah Fujimari, who is the standout player as of yet for the Buffalo Buttes. Faced 45 shots last game, was able to stop 41 of them. As this one goes rimmed around once again. Kelly couldn't hold it in. Parker gets the job done there at the left point. Almost taken out of there. Could have been a dangerous break from Stacy. As we're going to get a high sticking call here. And it will turn into an offensive zone draw for the Buttes to Salander's glove side left. McPherson versus Dempsey once again for the faceoff. One forward, but not quite in Boston control yet. Kelly trying to battle with Stacy to get free of that puck. Taken down to her knee, still gets it free. The double team being applied a lot more by the Buttes defense to try to interrupt those passing attempts. And now through center for Tina. Gains the offensive zone, but they say Brand was offside, or else she could have had a golden opportunity with the forehand there. And we remind all of our viewers on Twitch TV, get involved with the chat. Tell us who your impact players would be, who you're rooting for, where you're watching from. We got quite a few international watchers, I know, from last night's game, so it'll be interesting to see where you might be today. Indeed, that's always fun to see um, who is watching and, and where from. And a potential three-on-two developed there for the Buttes. They've got some offensive pressure now sent to the middle, but just fanning on a one-time shot there was Brown, and it goes all the way back into Buffalo's end. LTA tried to get it up for Bustad. Both she and Boutinia go to the ice. Buffalo trying to catch Boston in a change now. At center ice, Rayel touch, touches up on it. And into the middle, Lexi Lang streaking up the left wing now. Trying to fire a shot. Goes right into the middle. Lang once again, but it's saved by Fuji Magari. But just like she was last night, Lexi Lang and every member of this entire line using that speed game and going right to the net to get Fujimagari uncomfortable. Indeed, but they're putting on a show for our fans watching on Twitch TV. I see the Netherlands, Sweden, SoCal, Illinois, Virginia Beach. Norway, even. Right here in Boston. And the Butte's going to take it back out, Bowering. Trying to switch to the right wing, far side of the ice. 
as Mastell all over her. Now throws on the brakes. Will look to move it with her backhand. Couldn't get it back up top there for Birdsall. And Rayal takes it back the other way. Streaking up now will cut right in on net with the backhand puck still loose and just able to be seen by the right pad. Puji Magari covers up that one. And we've now got 12-14 to go in period number one. Pride still holding on to that one nothing lead and the chances have still really been coming for them. Shout out to, of course, Buffalo, the 716, Seattle, North Carolina, Chicago. Always have special love for, for fans in North Carolina. I went to school down there. And I worked some games down there in the always fun Southern Professional Hockey League. Know North Carolina very well. But Buttes, again, looking to break it back out. Boston making it difficult for them just beyond the Blutes. Blue line, Soliotis tried to hold it in, but now skipping it past and entering the offensive zone. Here comes Klimasova. Gets a big shoulder there from Kaylee Fratkin. But that's going to be a penalty call, and that's the aggressive style of game that Fratkin really likes to play, but sometimes it does get her in trouble. And with 11.51 to go in the period, Buttes to the first power play of the game. Yes, Fratkin, Connecticut Whale fans know well, Riveters fans know well, and now Boston fans as well know that Fratty plays an aggressive game. It works when it works. You definitely want her on your side if you got to play an aggressive game, but sometimes it means you got to go to the sin bin. And 0 for 3 were the Buffalo Buttes in that game yesterday. They get the first opportunity here. Bowering trying to move in from the circle. Peltier, the quarterback up top, gets it down low. Waiting was Bowie at the right post. Forced to land her to go back quickly left to right to cover off. I think that pinged off the post sounded like and again down low, here's Bowie working from the circle, almost a redirect that might have also just gone off the post there as in front of the net was Guillen. And now it finally gets beyond the blue line, trying to go shorthanded. Here is McKenna Brand, switches to the middle, just past the right pad of Fujimagari. A good attempt by number 17. So 11-13 to go in the period, 120 remaining on this Buffalo power play. And now Laxi Lang going to do a good bit of shorthanded work, but can't get it back to one of her... Defense ladies at the point, but Boston still content to play a little game of keep away here as once again they enter the Buffalo zone. And have already killed off half of this power play with most of it being in Buffalo zone under the ice. And Buffalo really, these errant passes are not working for them. The Boston Pride is just moving so well through all three zones that if you're not hitting these passes tape to tape, as they say, you know, crisp passes, you're not going to get past the Boston Pride. And a couple of them go tape to tape there as Stacy trying to work her way around behind of the net gets it back to McPherson. Forced to play on her backhand from the half wall and now moves a little farther down low. Buttes with some room now, but only 27 seconds remaining on their power play. Stacy at the half wall, again watched closely there by Emily Flute. She's a very good defensive body, good up here on this penalty kill, and she gets a good stretch pass to Mary Parker. She's in ahead now, trying to turn with her backhand. That's going to be a slashing call assessed there. As a very good play by Mary Parker, and almost a desperation move to try to break that up there from Skarbowski. I'm sorry. It was um, Klimasova. Klimasova. Yes, um, but we were talking about passing, and what a great example of an of a excellent pass. I believe you said that was fluke on that outlet. And then there you go. You, you make the defense give up a decision. Are they going to let them go streaking in on their goalie or potentially, you know, take a penalty? So now at the halfway point of this first period, it's going to be 12 seconds of four-on-four. Four. The Pride will start with an offensive zone draw, and then it will become nearly a full power play for them. So Leotis back at the point. She winds up that big slap shot. Goes off of the mask of Fuji Magari and high into the netting. Ooh, that was a rocket. And I uh, want to give a quick shout out to the goalie guild that's giving us some analysis in the chat about the different styles of these two goalies. Something that I might not notice right away, but so glad to have them on the Twitch. <laughs> and now back up top. So Leotis walking that blue line, looking for a good pass. As out of the box comes Fratkin, it's a full power play now for the Boston Pride. 9.45 to go in the period. Fratkin and Suliotis, perhaps the most dangerous slap shot shooters on this Boston Pride team. They look to get it farther down low. Brand taps it from the circle. Quick one-timer from Fratkin. Got caught up in the shins there of Butte's player in front of the net. And Brand once again sends it back. 
Some quick tap passes here. But now Brand cuts into the top of the slot. Fires and scores! Beautiful cutback from McKenna Brand. She had at least four penalty killers right in front of her from the high slot. I mean, and that's just amazing passing. You see that the Boston Pride are getting the Buffalo Buttes to move back and forth, move laterally. They're causing confusion. They're taking uh, away uh, the sight vision of Fujimagari in particular. And McKenna Brand, you know, we were, you in particular, Sam, were calling her number last night. And my goodness, she's looking like she's rolling for the Boston Pride this afternoon. Halfway through period number one, she's already got two goals in this game to give the Boston Pride the lead where they have it right now. Butte's trying to go quickly on the response shift here. Peltier has it at center ice. That pass broken up by Sullivan. She has Lang streaking with her. Tried to go to the front of the net all by herself. Gets tripped up in a good battle there with Bustad. And now again, trying a deflection as Sullivan came back in. These good shots from the point are the Boston Pride applying. And Buffalo already back on their heels, but trying to get back in. Two-on-one opportunity. Stacy and McPherson. Stacy goes inside and then rebound comes out. Forehand on it. And again, Stacy tries and she scores. And that's just grit right there. Oh, man, and there's a, a nice little pile on there as we see the excitement that this Buffalo Buttes team has as they get their first goal of the afternoon. And it looks like it's Brooke Stacy coming through. She comes through on the line first with Taylor Accursi behind her, the alternate captain. Brooke Stacy has been phenomenal for this Buttes team thus far. A University of Maine product, some good hockey years in Hockey East. And now she immediately cuts this lead in half with 8.33 to go in period number one. And off that faceoff, it looks like we got a hand pass call. Thought it was the right call. And uh, so it will go back down into the pride end of the ice. And this is what's going to be important about that goal. Not only getting on the board early, but you break up the momentum. McKenna Brand gives you two goals if, uh, for the Boston Pride early in the game and it's good on the Buttes to respond back that's something that they couldn't do until late yesterday and now it could be next goal really breaks it up in his lookout two on one here Wolfweiler tried a wrist shot goes wide on the right side of the net for Fujimagari and Kelly looks to cycle it down low right now Parker got caught up behind the cage and still looking to fight it off again reaches for it did Parker but unable to get that puck Buttes look to clear once again at the half wall, their trouble spot. Pride still all over them, trying to prevent those clearing attempts. And Lauren Kelly now holds it in. She goes farther in from the blue line. A bunch of traffic in front of her. Couldn't get that slap shot off. And a couple of sticks go high there. And Butte's finally able to take it out. They could have another odd woman rush the other way. A Kersey coming with Bowie. She fires a rich shot off of the glove of Salander. And she saves the second one as well. Still poking away. And Salander gets the pads down. An excellent flurry of saves with 7.35 now to go in period number one. Sam, I don't know about you, but the pace of this game seems drastically different than it did yesterday. Or I should say, it felt more one-sided yesterday. Both teams are really being aggressive this afternoon. you got to love this kind of hockey. Back and forth action. A couple of odd woman rushes for either team firing good shots on the goaltender. Either way, it's been exciting. We're going to take a short commercial break here now. And a big stretch pass there, and the Boston Pride score. McKenna Brand already gonna make it rain headgear. <laughs> My goodness, 
What a game, McKenna Brand. Three goals in a single period, and there's still 7.24 to go in the game. And I apologize greatly that a commercial was still going on before we were able to get the full watch of that. Man. This Boston team, as you started to see the names coming together, the re-signings, the rookies coming in, you had a feeling that something good was going to happen here in Boston. And so far, that's exactly what has happened. Now we see if the Buffalo Buttes, a team that has always found their way to the final, can come back and start up some magic of their own. And McKenna Brand, three goals on the evening. And the Boston Pride have taken back control of this game. A two-goal lead with seven minutes to go in period number one now. Another one chipped forward for her. Can Brand possibly get four if she gets to that puck first? But she's not able to do so there. Hughes again looking to go up ice. Pass deflected at center ice. As the Buttes make a full change here. And a hat trick in 13 minutes. Which is amazingly not the quickest hat trick I have seen in my broadcast career in my collegiate days at the University of Pennsylvania. How about this? A hat trick in 520. Ooh, that's quick work there. With the Buffalo Buttes coming back the other way. Kersey drops it off for Bursall. She fires a slap shot right to the pads of Solander. A wraparound attempt now. Bowering gets a rebound, trying to bat that out of the air. Right in front of the cage was Bowie. Solander saw that puck all the way. And the Buttes forced to retreat. Bowie getting aggressive. Really wanted to try and bat that puck down, but had to be careful, of course, not to get a high stick. And Bender will pick it up for the Boston Pride, trying a good pass along the left wing, but it was past Sullivan. That one will not quite go down for the icing. Allows the Pride to make a full change. And Buffalo will start on the counter rush. Pass for Sheriff. Was afraid she might have been offside as she had gone farther forward, so the Pride able to take back control. Five and a half to go now in period number one. It's a 3-1. Boston Pride lead all three goals, coming courtesy of McKenna Brand. I'm seeing in the chat people are asking about an all-star game, and absolutely the NWHL has an all-star game. Season one, the Buffalo Buttes hosted the all-star game, and then after that it's been at neutral locations, including... Nashville last year, the year before the Minnesota Whitecaps entered, they actually hosted Minnesota, that is, the All-Star game, and also had it in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. As a quick shot goes in right there from the point, Jenna Rail wasn't quite sure who got the deflection right in front of the cage. Looks like it might be credited to Emily Fluke, and if so, that would be her very first goal with the Boston Pride, certainly not her first in the NWHL. Or her first at Warrior Ice Arena, for that matter. But that's going to break the game wide open once again. It's back up to a three-goal lead for the Boston Pride. I should say their first three-goal lead of the game. 4-1 now with 5-11 to go in period number one. And Fluke with that deflection does officially get credit. And the Buttes trying to just find their footing it has to feel like a case of whiplash right here a couple of bang bang goals quickly by the opposition so Ray out to fluke at 1441 of period number one a five goal first period if you came to watch some offense you came to the right place here on twitch tv and as someone who is uh, a little more into defense that's certainly something that we're going to have to see the buffalo buttes work on i mean they're they're just allowing too many bodies in front of fuji magari and that's not boding well for them obviously they get a tip there i mean mckenna brands has just been having her way all over the ice and still some good zone time for the pride working here with the jillian dempsey line as putinia comes out she tried to play one out of the air but it's forced to go back to neutral ice and so Leotis now for Frutinia. Enters at the right point. Tried to send it into the middle for Dempsey, but a good defensive play being there at the last moment by delay. And Brand again tried to get the pass forward. It's gotten down low for her. If she had gotten it on her backhand, perhaps could have had a shot at the goal, but now retreats back to the half wall. 
Sends it farther down low behind the cage. Coutinho trying to get to it before a couple of Butte's bodies, and now Fratkin has it. And Dempsey, a good job poking away at that puck. Butte's just going to be content to clear this puck, and Sheriff hasn't quite gotten the job done yet, but she does only as far as center. Coutinho sends that right back in past the glove of Fuji Magari. Buffalo just reeling with tired legs. I want to go back to that Sheriff pass. It's just too much. She put too much on that. You know, you pass that out into the neutral zone to no one, and, and it's the pride all the time that are going to pick that up. you got to put your head up, find your player, or put the puck in a position where they can get to it first, and that's not, unfortunately, what happened right there. And Butte's looking to put together a couple of crisp passes there and says just jump, dumped in by Sheriff. She was on a long shift out there doing some good defensive work, and now Sullivan looking to take it in at the right point. They say no offsides there. Sent to the middle. Lang has it on her forehand. Rebound comes out just trying to get that puck in. Was Lang from her body. My goodness. As the net then came off of its moorings. And that was a valiant effort. That is when you saw the Buttes come together. You see that as they come, they have to jump in front of goal because Fujimagari is too far out of position. That was a wide open net and there just wasn't enough punch that Lang, I believe it was, had to put that puck away. And 2.43 left in period number one, a three goal lead for the Boston Prime. They're still buzzing in the offensive zone. Parker switches places with Wren. She will try to maintain control of the puck. Buttes now have it in the corner. And we'll look to get it out. Bird's all watched closely by Puke and Matt Stell. A good tap pass to keep that in. And the Buttes breakout again just seems disorganized with their passing. Forced to go to the corners on the wall as Parker again keeps that one and will backhand it in deep. And Fluke now behind the cage. Tried to get it out for Wolfiler. Parker with the rebound. That wrist shot goes well high and into the netting. Again, Fujimagari having a game. Also on that sequence, I noticed that she was giving direction to her players. There were a few times, and, and even still after she pointed out, where the Buffalo Buttes were leaving that far post wide open. In basketball, you call that weak side defense. Not a lot of weak side defense for these Buffalo Buttes so far. And they win the faceoff once again. McKenna Brand working for it along the half wall, trying to get the pass out. She will now backhand it free of trouble, but collected first by the Buttes, Becky Bowering. And Peltier again tries to lift it out. Bowie will do so, but Brand, she's the first one there, getting control once again for the Boston Pride. Good forechecking pressure, still a Pride by Bowering as it's good offensive zone take. Good interception there by Bowie. She had a good wrist shot, but it went well wide of the blocker side of Salander there. And Kareen Bowie, she has been all over the ice with some very good wristers and slap shots as well. As she again tries to send it into the middle for a Kersey, but it skipped just beyond her as breaking up that play also was Fratkin. Pride Dempsey avoids a hip check there by Bustad, still able to get that puck into the offensive zone. Bowie looking to take it right back out. Again, barely crosses the red line, and the Kersey didn't quite rush for it as she was at the end of her shift. Now Pride going right back in. Sullivan drops it off for Taves. Gets it out of the air as we're into the final minute of the first period. And again, can't be cleared, but Bender just get past the blade of her stick. Couldn't quite hold it in, or else it could have been a good setup for the Pride. Dumped by Kelly. Fujimagari out of the net to play it. Buttes will try perhaps one more rush in the final 40 seconds here. Good stretch pass from Peltier to be tapped in by Stacy. Bender gets it away from Klimasova there, but now taken by McPherson. Far side corner. Battled for. McPherson on the forehand couldn't quite get it away, and now Bender tries to do so. Gotten to Sullivan. Now the pride with some room to work. Laying up ice for Taves will simply chip it in there as we're down to the final 12 seconds. And Butte's just going to look to survive and get out of this period as Bender tries one more shot, only goes off of the shins there of Birdsall. And that will do it for the first 20 minutes of play here on Twitch TV. If you're a Boston Pride fan, you can nearly call it the McKenna Brand period. Three of the four goals scored. She had that all within the first 13 and a half minutes of play. And once again, what more can Maria Fujimagari do for the Buffalo Buttes team to keep them in this game? And will we perhaps see a goal change going into period number two? You know, that's really interesting because on one end, Fujimagari's playing amazingly well. 
Um, however, she is just completely um, being eaten alive by these rushes that the Boston Pride is putting together. And she's being asked to move laterally a lot and the, the puck is not being cleared. Not only the puck not being cleared in front of her, but more importantly, the bodies. Her team is not able to force the Boston Pride out of that danger zone. And, and that's going to be a challenge. Again, I saw some defensive breakdowns for the, the Buffalo Buttes. And that's something that they're really going to have to work on in this second period. And looking to get the official shots on goal is I'm just going to try to... Um, Pull them up here for, through the first 20 minutes. It's actually a lot more even than we thought. 12 to 11 in favor of Buffalo. The shots on goal total, but of course where it matters most, the goals scored. Boston Pride thoroughly leading in that category, but we will take our break here for the first intermission. Pride leading, and we will see you on the other side of the first 20 minutes. And welcome back in, all those fans of NWHL Hockey and those watching on Twitch TV, back live at Warrior Ice Arena. The Boston Pride taking on the Buffalo Buttes. It's a 4-1 Boston Pride lead after the first 20 minutes of action. The goals coming courtesy of McKenna Brand, who has three of the four. The other coming off of a deflection, giving credit to Emily Fluke. Good to see Emily Fluke finding her role with this Boston team. I've mentioned before, Playing with the Connecticut Whale, she's always loved playing here in Boston, excited to play in front of her family, and I'm sure some of her coworkers will hopefully come to some of the games. But I'm, I'm telling you, McKenna Brand just can't say enough about her coming out on fire, especially being able to quell any of that early uh, aggression that we saw from the Buttes. That was critical, her being able to come up with three goals. Um, but of course, Brooke Stacy as she has done in all three of her, or all two of her professional games prior to today, has been able to really put her team on her on her back and, and be a spark plug for this offense. But I think Kareem Bowie, you really have to start seeing Kareem Bowie get more activated and, and have some more off, uh, options offensively. Well, with the puck drop, we are underway for the start of the second period. Team switching ends of the ice, so now Buffalo skating left to right from our vantage point. Boston right to left as they go back into the offensive zone quickly. Here's Taves at the far side. Tried to send it into the middle for Sullivan, but broken up by Bowering. And the Buttes will go back on the counter rush. A Kersey delayed there by Fracken going up her left wing. And Boston again trying to break out. And it's been the breakout for both these teams, but definitely more on the side of Buffalo that has really been the struggle point. Just breaking out not only with reinforcements, but just getting that good initial pass out to the center of the ice. And just as you said that, Fracking kind of gave up a pass, but it didn't look like Peltier was able to, to keep that in the zone there. But again, another errant pass. And another quick shot in fired by fired in on Fujimagari by Mary Parker and good on the Buffalo Buttes to still have confidence in their big goaltender she made all those saves last night and despite giving up four first period goals she's still in the cage for period number two she's been looking good I mean she's getting peppered for sure now one thing that you might want to say about Fujimagari is just for her to you know cover up the puck a little bit quicker but considering that she's getting peppered and these are these are you know high speed shots I think she's really doing her best I think it's more of this Buttes team being there to clear the puck and here come the Pride in transition Emily Fluff she got tripped up there on that attempt to try to get a good breakout pass so the Buttes they'll be able to take it back up ice I like what Bustad did just there. She took the puck up, but again, just not a crisp pass to get to her teammate. But that's a better option, I think, for the Buttes, who unfortunately have not been able to pass out of the zone. Well, we're a minute 40 through period number two now, still looking for 
bit of a break in the action. Good back and forth between both these teams so far, getting their legs back under them, but still that good speed game being applied by both teams. That's a deep pair of Bender and Kelly will try to get the puck out of their own zone, sending it farther up the wing. That was Poutinia. And now in, McKenna Brand, dangerous, trying to get a deflection in front of the net. She almost had Dempsey, who runs right into Fujimagari, and make sure she's okay after that collision. And that's why Dempsey continues to be one of my favorite players to watch in this league. Makes no mistakes, goes in hard to the net as she sees that puck loose. But as soon as that whistle's blown, she knows that we're out here. You know, everyone's out here trying to do their best. And she checks in on Fujimagari, her opponent, the one she's trying to beat in net. That's Jillian Dempsey for you, though. Where's the C for good reason? And she will be taking the face off here. She's able to win it back. Malstel from the point farther down the half wall. Putinia trying to switch places there, but instead will carry it by herself behind the net. Almost flipped one out. Got a stick on it there with Fujimagari. And a turnaround try by Dempsey. Brand couldn't get the rebound as well, but she still battles for it in the corner. Fujimagari is also just a smart goaltender. Even when she's not able to stop something cleanly, she, she makes sure that she is pushing it away. And Brown back the other way, trying to knife her way through that combination there of Mastel as well as row. <laughs> so Landry just kind of slid out of the way and watched her slide right into the net. She was coming moment. full speed and she certainly wasn't stopping but that's the game <laughs> you have to play here as we're two and a half minutes gone through period number two as this face off will come out to the neutral zone dot. No. That's a Lexi Lang line taking position. Buoy line out there for Buffalo and Bustad will dump it right in for Buffalo. Frank in there to get it for the pride. And taking it off the half wall, we'll dump it all the way down ice. Not sure it touches stick. Lexi Lang again racing to try to break out that icing call, but won't be able to do it. Some fast jets, and that's been a good addition to the Pride game that I don't think we've talked about the last few games, how much they've stretched their legs to cancel out some of those icing calls from a big stretch pass that you would think would end in a call like that. Indeed, Lexi Lang, of course, being one of those people that you notice uh, definitely bring in some speed. And the Buttes again, a big slap shot there. Excuse me. <laughs> big slap shot fired by Taylor Accursi, and that goes high into the netting. That was quite the shot. Salander, so I don't know if she put up the glove because she saw it or she was trying to protect herself. And now Bowering from the circle looking to win it back. Accursi in a big stick battle there for Fracken. Both of them getting really aggressive after that puck on the half wall. But now Parker can streak through center. She gets in over the blue line, dumps it back with her forehand, couldn't quite get off a slap shot there, was Sullivan. And the Pride will still try to maintain offensive control behind the net. Fratkin going to go get it. She was watched by Skarbowski. And now they can try to circle around the horn. Can the Pride? Sullivan deeks away from two players from the circle, winds up a wrist high, and scores! Beautiful stick movement <laughs> from Alyssa Wolfweiler. Former Connecticut Whale a founding member of this league and that was just some amazing work she's able to deep pass she she turns on a dime switches her her positioning and then my goodness looks like she went top shelf on that one and it looks like we are going to get that change mariah fujimagari is going to come to the bench as kelsey newman shout out to north carolina kelsey newman is now between the pipes for the Buffalo Buttes, now she has been with this franchise before, went to the CWHL last year, and is now back. Has won a championship in this league, as you mentioned, native of China Grove, North Carolina, Clarkson and SUNY Plattsburgh for her collegiate career. Alyssa Wolfiler giving credit with the goal, just a beautiful wrister, as you mentioned, Erica, top shelf. And Pride trying to get it out of their own end here. Trying to fend off that aggressive Buffalo counter shift. As Dempsey going right back in. Has Bender through the middle. That puck got deflected away from her. Almost goes up into the Boston bench. But now taken away at the blue line. And here comes Peltier. A two on one. Passes it across. And then trying to get right out in front. What a stretch save there by Salander. Kicking the left pad out to deny Marie Joe. That was a beautiful sequence by the Buttes, but Salander read it all the way. And now it's still picked up by Buffalo. They are buzzing. Guillen trying to come right in at the right post. Salander closing that off with both pads. And Bender will try to lift it out, and it goes up high into the netting. 
and out of play. Again, a good response shift by the Buffalo Buttes. Peltier shaking her head a little bit there. She was just out of position, just missed being able to bang that home to get the second goal for the Buffalo Buttes. But more of that, Sam, is what we have to see from the Buffalo team. And we are now four and a half minutes through period number two. Boston now up to a 5-1 lead, courtesy of Alyssa Wolfiler, the former Connecticut Whale forward. As they will try to get it done in the end of the offensive zone. Good puck taken away there, gotten now behind the net by Sullivan. She got tripped up on that play as a couple of bodies going through the ice. And now Buffalo looking to take it back in transition. They've got an advantage. Here's Brown coming in, streaking with the forehand and backhand broken up there at the last second by Mastell. Someone in the chat asking, and that's Mary Jo Peltier, number four for the Buffalo Views. And she's a defender, not a forward, but she is an alternate captain, and for good reason. I really like her game so far. Really shown a good flash of speed, and it's always good when you have those defense ladies who can kind of match the speed of the forwards, really get up there into the rush and provide that offensive game. She's also great at blocking shots. She had three massive shot blocks. She's really great. Even with that rush, she was able to slide and extend so she didn't get the offside call in order to get her team in a position to even have an opportunity on Solander. She's just a very smart player so far. Eager to see what she brings to this fifth season of the NWHL. And face off again in the Buttes end of the ice. Looking to break it out there was Bowering, but again collected, almost sent into the middle there. For Wolfiler, couldn't quite get control of the puck, and it's back out to center. So Leota searching for a stretch pass. Parker came in, but Wolfiler hadn't quite touched up by the time she entered, so that will be an offside. And just a time check, we have 14-25 remaining in, yes, what is the second period. The home team, the Boston Pride, up 5-1 to one on the Buffalo Buttes. Already have a hat trick in this game, that being, of course, McKenna Brand. And Buttes taking control right here, trying to get it past their own blue line. But we forced her a treat there. The four check by the Boston Pride again, just right in there, woman on woman with some great coverage. And now McKenna Brand, that hat trick scorer, will take it back in off of her backhand. Tried to be rimmed around the boards, but Dempsey there to collect. For the Pride in the corner, we'll give it away to Brand. Right on in front, Putinia almost got that puck on her stick, was right in front of Newman, ready to take a shot. But pass couldn't quite connect. Now Kaylee Franken building up the speed in her own end. Again, pass goes by both Putinia and Brand. And down into the Buffalo end for Icing. And since she was new in the game, just didn't get to mention a couple points here about Kelsey Newman, the, go the new Buffalo goaltender. She is a veteran in this league. She has been a champion before. And especially when playing the goaltending position, you need a very good teacher. And Kelsey Newman, former student of the legendary Soviet netminder Vladislav Tridiak, a member of all those victories for decades and decades with the team they called the Red Army until, the, of course, they were beaten in Lake Placid in 1980 by those Miracle USA boys. And Buffalo still with control off of the draw here in the Boston end. 13.27 to go now in period number two. Still a four-goal comfortable lead for the Boston Pride. McPherson trying to get something going for the Buttes, but she's tied up there with Soliotis. Trying to dig it off of the half wall. And now Stacy has some room. Gives it away there. Back down low. Stacy almost had the redirect. Getting down the pads was Salander. She's made a couple of very good saves, keeping her head on the swivel there. Maybe not as many in the athletic variety as Fuji Magari or Newman have had to make. But, you know, a save is a save. And good on her to make sure that she's keeping her head in the game as, of course, the ice is definitely tilted to the other side and so good to see that Salander is staying focused and able to contribute to her team when when she's called and good up by stretch pass Sullivan gets in the zone at the left point and I think they might have said that puck was offside yes they will and the faceoff will go back to the neutral zone and we thank our viewers for getting us up to 459 on twitch tv right now the official number and remember, every time that you subscribe to Twitch TV, you're helping the league. But the league also has a deal. 50% revenue share goes to the players' pool. 
That's a way to directly help all of the players on the ice. And as the players, the work they do in this league and the skill they put in, they absolutely deserve it. Lexi Lang tips it in now for Carly Taves, her line going to work. And Kaylee Franken getting assist credit on that last goal, which definitely pleases her young fans in the stands. They had quite a plethora of signs for her as she came out of the locker room for the start of period number two. She definitely had to appreciate that. Well, Kaylee Fratkin, of course, went to school here in Boston, also played with the Blades and before heading over to the NWHL. So she has roots here in Boston, and that's part of the reason now she feels that she has a home here with this Pride team. And there was some good offensive pressure as the Buttes were making a change there. Thought Sullivan was going to go after it, but now a big scrap right in front of the Boston bench has finally turned away, and Kelly can get to safer shores, but now right across the line, here comes Wolfiler trialing for another goal, but she lost control of that puck, and Bowering now stretching up the left wing, gets run into by Kelly. No penalty call assessed there, and the Pride will take back control of the puck. Right off of the bench, keeping it in, Skarbowski gets it away to Bowering, high up into the air, rebound comes out to a curtsy, firing, and a big save by Solander to keep that puck out of the net. I want to see that replay again because Solander definitely made the initial save, but I think Akersi might have just went wide on her shot on the wraparound attempt. And a couple of bodies going down to the ice. Saw Parker tripped up a little bit. Akersi getting into it as well. But the Pride, they have control now back in transition. Brand trying to throw on the brakes and get it back to the point. Coming off on the bench, trying to break that up is McPherson, and she will do so. She's in a race now with Frackton struggling to catch her. Fires a rich shot, saves Solander. A good job by Kaylee Franken getting back in on that rush. And LaVisa Solander still keeping all but one Buffalo Butte shot out of her cage. Brooke Stacy was there as well, but I don't think she was a, a far enough ahead of the defender for McPherson to get a sliding pass over to her. And another scramble right in front of the net. The Pride couldn't do anything with it, but they have control in the corner now. Looking to turn from the half wall is Luke. Tried to dump it back, I think, for Soliotis, but couldn't quite gain control. And now taking it back up for Mova. Sends it into the middle. Stacy was ready again, but couldn't get that one-time shot off. That's breaking up that pass with Soliotis. And now Putinia right back the other way. A good game of back and forth between these two teams so far. We've got 10-12 to go in period number two. Pride still with a four-goal lead. And now picking it back up off a good intercept. Couldn't get it down at the side of the net, Putinia. It's definitely body-to-body, -body, stick to stick right now in the last several minutes of this game, Sam. Peltier, a good flip pass there to Brown again. Kicked aside by Solander. Youth still with control. Peltier, she winds up a slap shot. Deflection goes wide. Pungi away at it with a backhand there. And coming in late was Guillen. But now Pride going back. Could have a two-on-one. Brand has Lang coming. Gets it to her with a forehand. Big save. Kelsey Newman in the splits. My goodness, what a save by Newman. But I want to give a shout-out to Putinia on the other end. Solander able to make the initial save but did not see the rebound. Putinia not only cleared the puck, but was able to corral it and look up the ice to make that pass ahead to get an opportunity that Newman then shut down. But that is what we're missing on the Buffalo Butte side. You see them trying to make passes, but they're making passes into open ice, and they're not winning those 50-50 pucks because the Boston Pride are swarming everywhere. You need a little more coordination from the Buffalo team. I want to see them kind of puck handle a little bit out of the zone until they can get a good solid pass and a breakaway. I think that's what we're seeing missing from this Buttes team. And we will take uh, just a brief commercial break. I promise we will be back in time for this one. And this is going to be a face-off on the Buttes end of the ice. Pride able to win it back. They get control in the form of Wren. Mastel, quick tap pass down to Sullivan. Good passing working again, but too much Buttes traffic right in front of the cage there. But again, held by Wren. And Taves was looking to go over that puck, but she had to touch up. Gives the Buttes a chance to go back out and collect. 9.19 to go in period number two now. 
Buttes really looking to get back to this game is nearly a dangerous collision with the Blades there. As Boston trying to go back in, but on offside called. And faceoff comes back out to neutralize. It's the Mary Parker line out there for Boston, and they are able to get it ahead. Emily Fluke from the half wall, watched closely there by Skarbowski, now able to get it free. Good battle in the far side corner now. Fluke able to take it away. Back up to the point. Kelly goes to Bender just beyond Lexi's stick, but now she has it back with some more room. Top of the circle, fires a flex and scores! Thinking maybe Emily Fluke given credit again or perhaps Mary Parker, but nonetheless an excellent point shot from Lexi Bender to get through all of the traffic. And it's a full handful now, the lead for the Boston Pride. Make it 6-1 with 8.49 to go in period number two. Couldn't tell on the replay that we're watching on Twitch TV, but we'll get that announcement from the PA shortly. Now it's a matter of what are the Buttes going to do they really got to focus on, on getting a goal here. And Emily Fluke officially given credit, so that will be her second of the afternoon. And Lexi Bender with the assist led all Pride Defense ladies in that category last year, well on her way to doing so again this season. And Alyssa Wolfiler credit with an assist, so give her a multi-point evening as well. And Bender tried to get it quickly up ice for Fertinia, but gotten back the other way for a Hersey for Buffalo. She tries to poke at Kelly to get control of that puck. And Buffalo, again, you're seeing it just in the neutral zone right here. The passes are tape to tape, but they don't seem to be going that way in the offensive zone. And tough defensively is a bad angle shot there by Bowering, easily seen and held by Salander. What's encouraging on the Boston side of things is that you're seeing contributions offensively from multiple players in these last two games alone. That's All three lines with points so far. That's going to bode well as the season stretches on. And again, we're having these doubleheader weekends this season. That's going to be important. And the Buttes certainly going to take this weekend so far as a learning experience, give them time to shape up their game. They don't play uh, Boston back here until, I believe, early December, unless I'm mistaken. And the Pride's still trying to go to work in the offensive zone now. Sullivan has it down low, trying with a backhand now, and goes to the forehand on her knees there was Lexi Lang, but couldn't quite get a good shot off. Still with control in the offensive zone. Again, trying to get it out in front. Taves gets the wraparound, almost poked at, but Newman gets it in the blocker. And some big shoving now, right in front of Newman's cage. It looks like Delay, the Buttes player involved with that one, handing out some shoves to Kaylee Fratkin, taking exception to a couple of those extra deeks at the puck after the play was over. Delay was the one also who gave a, a very swift and assertive shove last night that set her own stick flying. Looks like she, though, is headed to the box. And she will go with 17, 7.14 to go in period number two. So the Pride with their second power play opportunity of the evening were unable to get one done on their first try. Still trying to break that big Ofer streak on the special teams. Now, you see, I'm, I'm all about, you know, sometimes drawing a statement penalty or, you know, I guess taking a statement penalty. I'm not sure, though, that that was necessarily what you want. Your, your team's already down five goals. I think, you know, a shove or two for sure. But delay, maybe a little frustration coming out. Although, again, I'm not the one on the ice. So who's to say what was said or done that we didn't see from up here? But nonetheless, now a person short, a skater short, the Buffalo Buttes are going to have to hold tight here and see, though, if they can get something going offensively. You know, I'm not sure 
you know, we'll see if they can do something shorthanded, but, you know, they've had their difficulties at even strength. Let well, alone Mara was short. just confirming there with the referees on exactly where he wanted that face off. It came to neutral ice. And roughing the official call assessed to delay. So the Pride will now go to work. Fratkin intercepted by a Kersey there. She goes in with some room from the circle. Gets the pass down there to Bowie. Goes off the top post. The shot from the Buffalo captain. And Pride going in transition now. Parker from her left wing tried to dump it off, but Butte's players were all around her. So Pride just trying to connect their first couple of passes here on the power play, but they're back in their own end now as Bowie still applying that aggressive forecheck. Bowie's not playing around, folks. She's hungry. She's been hungry since last night. She hit a post and I think a crossbar already today. I like it, Bowie. I like it. And you could see her just heading to the bench, kind of giving that signal to her teammates as they ca came on to replace her as a penalty killers of, come on, guys, let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. And from the half wall, good shot fired in there by Soliotis, seen all the way by Newman, and she'll hold. 55 seconds to go now in the Boston power play, 6.09 left in period number two. It is still a 6-1 Boston Pride lead, their most recent goal coming courtesy of Emily Fluke, her second of the night. And McKenna Brand still with half the Boston tally. She had a hat trick back in the first period as a quick clear there by Buffalo off of the draw. And it's going to be Rowe and Wen, the new defensive pair out there, quarterbacking this power play. 41 seconds to go. Send into the middle for the mentioned hat trick goal scorer, McKenna Brand, but she loses it at the half wall. And so far, a man down. This has been, I think, one of the best defensive shifts I've seen from Buffalo in quite a while in this game. I would agree, and they need it. They absolutely need it. It's crunch time. But Sheriff loses a stick there, so that could give a big opportunity to the Pride now. Row from the circle. Rebound comes out, but none of the Boston players were home. Sheriff tried to clear it with her skates, and she will do so. Again, continuing the great defensive game, really defensive weekend she's had here. And she will go off at the end of her shift. Final four seconds. Boston going to try one rush in. Dempsey was trying to get to that puck. Boston will keep control, but out of the box comes delay. And Buffalo will have an opportunity the other way. They get it to her up the right wing, but Bender gets there before delay can get it into the offensive zone. She's shoved into the half wall, and McPherson gets that puck free. Tried to go right in on the left pad there of Solander, but she denied her. <laughs> delay is... Playing a spicy game now, folks. My goodness. This is where you have to get feisty if you're Buffalo as Skarbowski picks up that puck from her skates, but no teammates around her. And Boston with some room now to try to clear. Big stretch pass gotten to Putinia. She will dump it into the zone at the end of her shift. That stick of Sheriff still on the ice, by the way, but Buffalo, they will take it back into their offensive end. Bowie cutting through all the pride players. Lost an edge there. And also lost control of the puck. Could have had a very good chance down low. Bowie's really taking on a lot here again. Uh, you want to see her be aggressive, but you also don't want her to, to play tight. And the deflection there right in front. Thought Newman had it with the right pad. But again, this line of Lexi Lang, Carly Taves. They strike, and it's going to be Carly Taves continuing her hot game from yesterday. She will get credit for the seventh. Boston Pride goal as they've now got a touchdown and the extra point and not much more you can say on that play just a never give up attitude from all three of those Boston forwards yes indeed that but I'll tell you what I never played uh, ice hockey uh, but I considered myself a defender in every sport that I played if I was on this Boston team I'd be telling my teammates protect the crease protect your goalie there were too many bodies there the push came after the puck was already across the goal line that's too late if you want to get spicy you got to do it before the puck goes across the net or across the goal line excuse me well they will take the goal nonetheless as an offside call there and Lexi Lang another assist to have to her resume and we should mention to those watching the stream older sister Denna she is once again right there in the corner as she has been since last night watching every single point, every single shift, and Little Sister's off to a pretty good start to her professional career. I'd say we were able to speak to Lexi. She mentioned also, you know, being able to follow not only in Dennis' footsteps, but her sister Brianna Lang also played here and was a goalie. And 
alluded to that her, her sister Brianna might still be with the Pride if she was still in Boston, but she is not. Um, and so Lexi, very happy to, you know, just continue the family business, as they say. We're ticking down to the final three and a half minutes now, period number two, and to say a tall task for the Buttes would be an understatement right now, but they're just trying to play for all they can get, trying to catch the Boston Pride, perhaps snapping a big slap shot fired in there by Stacy, and that was how the Buttes got one of their goals last night. You remember back to that shot by Klimasova. It was just an excellent <laughs> slap shot coming right in, and that's what the Pride can allow themselves to do right now is just kind of get lazy, get content. They have to keep this speed game up. Indeed, we talked to Tori Sullivan last night as well, and she felt that did happen in the third period for them a little bit, and we saw the Buffalo Buttes were able to get their two goals in the third period. So now it's a matter of, is the Boston Pride going to be able to stay composed and controlled, and how much can the Buffalo Buttes really push the issue, throw their weight around, make sure that they're drawing some fouls, and get some quality shots on net. And trying to get something done in the final few minutes. They have offensive zone time right now. Do the Buttes, but taken back out just as quickly by Dempsey. She lost it at the half wall. Coming right back in delay. She's played a feisty game, as you mentioned, Erica, so far this period. Her wrist shot goes high and into the glass. But almost a good deflection with Bowie raiding in front of the net. Oh, I love it. I love how delay is playing. I do, again, though, want her and a few other players to get some bodies out of the way of it's Newman now in net. And McKenna Brand had a very good zone entry once again. Tried to go forehand, backhand on Newman. Was skating just why they're trying for her fourth goal of this contest. And Puccini gets it back out to Dempsey. Has some room for the circle. Rister right into the gut area of Newman. She'll hold on. And for our commenters here on Twitch TV, as we're getting close to the end of the period, we know we may have some disappointed Buttes fans in the crowd, but um, really give us your players of the games, who they've been so far. And although they've been down on the scoreboard plenty, there's a lot of deserving Buffalo Buttes candidates for not only this game, but the entire weekend, as one of them may be Taylor Kersey trying to get a goal here and tripped up was Bowering. That's going to be a delayed penalty call as Boston finally touches up on it. And that will be a trip assessed to Tori Sullivan. She will head to the sin bin in the final minute and a half of period number two. And you see Kareem Bowie having a conversation. Looked like she was giving propos to Taylor Accursi for being aggressive. But again, Bowering able to follow up on that. The play looked like it was falling apart, but she was able to follow up, collect that puck, and draw the penalty. You need more of that. Too many times you've seen the Buttes kind of be a one-and-done team or allow one person. And look out, Mary Parker, quick steal off of DeLay. She goes in all alone. Deeks saved by the pad of Newman. What a denial on the breakaway. My goodness. And this weekend, what more does Mary Parker need to do to get on this goal-scoring sheet? As again, Newman covers that one. But my goodness. Looked like a shootout attempt rather than a shorthanded chance for Mary Parker. But cool, calm, and collected was the goalie from North Carolina. Raise up, baby. Whew. And the pride, they will try to go shorthanded again in their own area. Buffalo takes control now. We're down to the final minute of period number two. Trying to get back into this game are the Buttes down 7-1. to one. Bowie from the half wall tries to cycle it around. Peltier is there, and she will get it in the far side corner. And now trying to come in down low there. This little bit was Klima Sova, but now it's cleared back to center ice, and Dempsey looking to take it in by herself. Almost got tripped up by Peltier. Loses control of the puck nonetheless. Final 40 seconds. Buffalo is still in the rush. Good connected pass there to Bowie, but she loses control to Soliotis on the half wall, and the two of them will now battle in the corner. Excellent pass, but great defending by Soliotis to force Bowie to the ends of the, oh, to the boards, excuse me. And Guillen still on those boards, getting it around to Bowie, and now Bowering. Bowering watched by Soliotis, just stapling her against the wall to try to get the puck free for her final 12 seconds of the period. Buffalo just trying to get that umbrella scheme set up right now, but Pride players are all over them. Now sent to the front of the net, almost not seeing it in her skates. 
in front was Fluke, and now a big slap shot wound up by Akersi, but it's cleared back down, and that will do it for period number two. So the Buttes will have 28 seconds that transfer over to period number three, but almost could have been a shorthanded goal given up there as Mary Parker tried her darndest, but Kelsey Newman came up big. But six goals to try to get back in this game for the Buffalo Buttes right now, and it certainly has not been for a lack of trying. I think the word that comes to mind really for me, Erica, is crisp. They haven't found the crispness yet in their game, either with the passing or with the shot attempts being forced to those perimeters. And if they can get that going, I think the Buttes have a very good opportunity to rattle off not only one, but maybe even a couple of goals to make them feel like they could still make this a game. I don't put it past them. I don't doubt them, but I think your word was right on, crisp. There's not a lot of crisp, crispness, unfortunately, for the Buffalo Buttes. You see it in streaks here and there, but that consistency, being able to thread it all together, I think that's what Kareen Bowie, I've seen her be a lot more talkative on the ice. I think that's what she's wanting for her team. That's what she's encouraging her players and her teammates to do. And, you know, when the captain speaks, you got to listen. So we'll see what happens in this third period as they have a little bit of time on that power play. And just reminding you of the goals here in period number two. They were all by Boston. Alyssa Wolfiler, she got it started with that great wrist shot off of an intercept. And then another deflection goal from Emily Fluke to make it 6-1. And then it was Carly Taves just with great stick to with her line mate Lexi Lang. She makes the score what it is right now, 7-1. to one. And looking at the shot total, uh, definitely more of a period for Boston, 15-10 to 10 in the second period. The shot total through 40 minutes, 26-22 to 22 in favor of Boston over Buffalo. And going into this final 20 minutes teams will shift end of the ice kelsey newman she's looked very strong could possibly give the buttes that jolt but i think it's 28 seconds that carries over into the third period if they can get that quick power play goal within that final 28 seconds could completely change the momentum around for the buttes get them that spring in their step that they've been lacking Absolutely, that's of course what they want to see. But even if they don't get that goal, just getting a little bit of that crispness back, getting some of that consistency rolling as they have that advantage to lead the third period will be key. It's going to be key, but a big lead for the Boston Pride, 7-1, to one, as we will take our break here for the second intermission and be back with you on Twitch TV for the final 20 minutes. And welcome back in, NWHL fans here on Twitch TV. Live at Warrior Ice Arena, the Boston Pride and the Buffalo Buttes getting ready to start period number three between these two teams. And as it was for most of the game yesterday, it has been all Boston. They hold a 7-1 to one lead entering the final 20 minutes of play. I'm Sam Priman with you on the call. Erica Ayala alongside me. And Erica for Buffalo, as we mentioned before, just needs to be a game of tightening up all those fundamental areas and then if you can take that little bit of momentum you can really turn it around on a team we saw the buffalo buttes do that a little bit last night and had they not given up so many goals early they might have been able to to do it or if they got going a little bit earlier so that's something that you're gonna have to see the buffalo buttes focus on six goals that's a lot however i mean we saw a hat trick in the first period so you never know a hat trick in the first period courtesy of mckenna brand she's got three emily fluke she also has two and then the other goal scores 
for the Boston Pride, Carly Taves, as well as, just pulling it up here. As we look over the goals, got both teams coming on the ice, and again, just gonna wanna see the Buttes be able to settle into their game. Kelsey Newman, between the pipes again for them starting off this third period and the Buttes are going to start off on the power play they have 28 seconds in that power play as we get started about to drop the puck on the third period Alyssa Wolfiler was the goal scorer I was missing puck is dropped and we are underway for period number three as a puck quickly goes into the Boston branch almost got Jillian Dempsey in the head there heads up on the bench And so we will go back into the pride end, right in front of LaVisa Solander. Lexi Lang going to try to win it off of the faceoff, but it's cleared back along the half wall. And a Kersey racing to get that puck from Lexi Lang. She will send it around the boards. And the Buttes can get back more comfortable control. Final four seconds as Buttes struggling to just rush up into the play. And out of the box comes Sullivan. So we're back to even strength hockey in the early stages here. Period number three, seven to one. Pride lead as they have control of the puck now. Trying to go up center is Sullivan just out of the penalty box. We'll switch to the left wing now and gain the offensive zone. As Taves and Dempsey coming as she'll try a shot all by herself. And racing off of the bench to keep that puck in. Lauren Kelly, what a great play. But she's double teamed by a couple of buttes there. And Bowering will take it back. And that early power of play I mentioned in the second intermission, it was a brief period of time, just 28 seconds carrying over into this third period. But it seems like the Buttes might have wanted to approach that with a bit more of a must-score attitude coming out onto the ice. Mm. Well, they got to get something going, that's for sure, Sam. And still in the offensive zone, buzzing are the pride, but that puck pushed off of Lexi Bender and McPherson will take it ahead. She gets into the offensive zone for Buffalo. Almost tapped out of control and now gotten ahead to Dempsey. Pride taking back the puck. McKenna Brand, she tripped up there. And that will be a penalty call as she got a stick in on Anna Or Orzachowski. And so McKenna Brand will get her first trip to the box and another Buffalo power play and another very good opportunity for them to gain some momentum in this third period. Perhaps a sigh of relief from Buffalo Buttes fans in the 716 as it's McKenna Brand. Hat trick. And that's what you love to see about a player like her who has gotten three goals in this first period, has contributed, even sitting there in the penalty box smiling, just having a ton of fun out there. Yeah. Well, my, to my point, I was trying to make, the, the, you know, the Buttes fans might be happy it's her and her hat trick <laughs> in, the, in the penalty box and not on the ice. Well, the killer is out there for the Pride. We'll have to do it without her as the Buttes send one softly in on Solander's net, and the Pride will take back control and send it out. Stretch pass almost gotten there to Fluke. She's kind of the cherry picker of the penalty killers right now. So we've got 17.46 to go in period number three. Now a minute 25 remaining on the Buttes' power play, and they're content to make some changes and take their time. And I don't hate that. Um, you know, at times I think they felt pressured to make passes and they were passes to no one. So settling things in, again, taking a look up the ice, seeing what you can get. And Brown I coming right up the middle as Parker takes it away. She switches to her forehand, gets another shot in on Newman. And boy, has she been dangerous shorthanded, Mary Parker. She's itching for a goal. We'll see if she gets one. But just to close up that point, you know, you do need to see the Buttes settle in a little bit and find their rhythm and not just react to what the Boston Pride is doing. And Bowering tripped up there by Soliotis. Lucky the Buttes didn't get a call on that one, or they could have had a five on three. And unable to clear there was Fratkin, so the Buttes still in the offensive zone. They got 37 seconds left on this power play. As again, just forced to the outside corners. That's what the Pride have been doing so effectively, really clogging that middle lane and the low slot as Fratkin from her left wing there will easily clear it down the full 200 as Buttes need to regroup.
Peltier leaves it for Bowie now, looking for that stretch pass, was trying to hit McPherson. And now a Kersey will try to go in. And one of the cardinal sins you could commit on the power play, icing it. With just nine seconds left on the woman advantage. And unfortunately, that's Peltier. I'm usually singing her praises, but that just wasn't a good connection, not a good pass. As you see her just kind of shuffle it up, not really with any conviction or, you know, able to get it to, to her teammate. I'm trying to win once again on the faceoff. Dempsey can't quite do it, but it's held in just briefly from Lauren Kelly, and that will do it as McKenna Brand comes out of the box. We're back to even strength hockey with just about four minutes gone in period number three. Pride still holding on to a six-goal lead, 7-1 to one on the scoreboard. And that one taken away by Peltier. Tried to feed a Kersey into the offensive zone, but the puck went just a bit ahead of her stick. And Lauren Kelly from the half wall ahead to Putinia. Try to stretch pass there for Jillian Dempsey. Goes well beyond her, but Carly Taves will cancel out the icing. Trying to hit Dempsey in front of the net as she gets tripped up there. Another good defensive play by Peltier. She's really been all over the ice for the Buttes, especially to start this period. They're going to need some of that, the Buttes, as well as, again, getting Kareem Bowie activated. But I want to see numbers with Bowie. If she's making an attack... You have to have players on her flank that can feed or pick up any rebounds. And Guillen trying to attack there in the corner. She has help from Brooke Stacy and almost ready to wind up a slap shot there was Klima Silva. Couldn't get a free lane. And Boston looking to stretch out the ice now. As Carly Taves gets it ahead. will dump it into the offensive zone. Check that. Lost control of the puck at center ice. Now it's back now for Lauren Kelly. She will try to feed Sullivan right on the blue line. Couldn't quite get it in. Players just going, tossing head over heels almost, trying to break up these stretch pass attempts. But good to see that defensive play from both squads as Mary Parker gets it right on the tape. Takes it in from the circle. Watch closely there by Birdsall. Now back to the point. Big slap shot from Rowe goes well wide of the net. And Buffalo on the counter wash. That one flipped up by Brown. Then we'll go back down and still just that dump and chase game. It's almost it's almost like no urgency from the Buttes right now. That's the opposite of what you want to see. And just a note to our fans watching on the Twitch. Give us your three stars. We still have some time in this third period, but uh, it looks like Sam and I are going to be able to weigh in. So we want to know what you think. Three stars of the game. And now Rowe, pestered there by Akersi. She managed to strip the puck away from her, but a shot couldn't be gotten off there by Akersi. And Boston will take it back, going from the left wing to the right. McKenna Brand goes right in ahead of Bustad. Both of them share a little contact along the half wall. Now Bender trying to get it from Peltier. Puck comes back into Buffalo control. McPherson almost double teamed there. And still the half wall is where the battleground is. Putinia tried to get a backhand free to Dempsey right in front of the net. And now Brand has it. She will circle back from the top. Plays a little catch there with Frackton. Winds up that big slap shot. Only goes off of the shins of McPherson. Does that attempt from the Pride defense lady. But still Buttes cannot clear. Left down in the low slot. Dempsey a good shot blocked again by Peltier. 13-18 to go in period number three. Here is Fracken again circling, but lost control of the puck right at the side of the post. But the Holdens, they remain with the pride. Soliotis, that one just went off her shins and out of the blue line. A bit disappointed in herself there. Lots of slipping and sliding on this fresh ice. And right back in comes Putinia with Lang. Lang goes to the front of the net. Pass couldn't be gotten by Putinia to her. And Taves will pick up the slack in the corner now. Tries to send it to the front again for Lexi Lang. The two of them not afraid to charge the net whatsoever. Just trying to backhand it out of trouble. The two teammates working for it. But Buffalo from the half wall again taken away. Down low. Taves from the circle. Fires it high past the glove side of Newman. And Guillen now again forced to only shoot it to the perimeter. Allowing the Boston Pride to pick up the garbage there. The Buttes don't get it past the blue line again. And now they finally do. But Skarbowski can only flip it back into Pride control as changes are made for the Buttes. It's just been same song, different verse with them trying to gain control in numbers. But just as I say that, they have an opportunity here. Into the zone with Stacy Gets it from the circle. Big slap shot again. Klima Soba goes wide. 
And Taves in transition up the right wing will simply dump it in at the end of her shift. Fresh legs out for the Boston Pride as the Buttes once again try to get it out. Delay from the corner. As we've got 11.50 to go in period number three, still a six-goal lead for the Pride. And they've managed to take big control. Fed back to Bender from Fluke. She fires one. Goes off of the shoulder, it looked like, of Newman. And the Buttes only get it to center. The Bender intercepts that pass. She goes right back in over the blue line, trying to cut through the defense there. Bender from the corner goes to the opposite side of the ice. Parker picking it up. Perhaps didn't notice Birdsall all over her. Puck goes a little bit high. And now in the corner once again, Fluke trying to dig it out, and she will do so. Working from behind Newman's cage. Looking for that pass in front. Will now just dip it off for Bender. Tries to turn the corner around, bowering. But the Butte forward was ready for her, but still cannot quite clear it out yet. From the wing, again gets run into by Bender. Meets her with the shoulder. And Butte's just getting tired as that puck goes all the way down ice. I think ultimately that's what we're seeing here is a very fatigued Buffalo team. And I think there's probably some fatigue on the Boston side as well, but they're content to run at the pace of the Buttes, especially with a six-goal lead. And it will actually be Lexi Bender headed to the penalty box. So 10.59 to go in period number three. Yet another opportunity for the Buffalo Buttes, but they are still over in this game. That can't happen after this. They have to make something happen in the next two minutes. Or else it could be a very long ride back to upstate New York to end this weekend. And we've seen how dangerous a couple of these Boston penalty killers have been shorthanded when they're able to intercept those passes between the forwards. As Rowe has control now, and she might have numbers with a couple of her teammates even. Gives it to Bram on the opposite wing. She fires on the circle. Pad save. Dempsey almost had it. And skating dangerously in the blue paint there was Peltier. But she was able to save control of the puck for the Buttes. And again, I like that by Peltier. Not only does she save that off the line, but then she brings the puck up to try and get things started offensively. And you're starting to see why she wears that A in her rookie season as a shot there goes well. Why? That was administered by a Kersey. And Bowie back up top. Peltier trying to rock the line. Dempsey was all over her. Fired it through a bunch of traffic, but Pride regained control. Brand going up ahead. Has Dempsey to her left now, but will take it all by herself. Again, Peltier, great sacrifice of the body. She has done everything defensively. I'm a big sucker for defense, and Peltier is really winning me over so far in this weekend series. Well, halfway through this penalty kill, here comes Lang with some room. She gets the puck on her forehand, fires one in. Newman, the save, rebound, came right to her pad. She fell on it, did Newman, and never indicated a stoppage. Puck still free, and Boston able to take control in the final 37 seconds here of the power play for Buffalo, although it doesn't look like it right now. Boston in their end of the ice trying to keep control. Double teamed there was Taves. So Buffalo able to poke the puck out just a little bit. Solio just loses her stick trying to keep control of a half wall. And that's going to be a slashing penalty. And so the power play goes away just like that for the Buffalo Buttes. And it's been really the theme of the game. Just haven't been able to catch an ounce of luck. 22 seconds of four on four. And then Boston Pride back to the power play. And I think here's where you have to have some of that mental toughness, Sam. I think they're getting a little fatigued. I think they're starting to, um, you know, instead of moving their feet, take shortcuts. And that's how you get those types of penalties. And it's not going to help you when you're trying to finish out your own power play to then have a player in the box. So Pride looking to possibly extend on a six-goal lead as that one gets iced down by Buffalo. We'll go right back into the far end of the ice. We've got 9.13 to go now in period number three. And 14 more seconds of four on four become it before it becomes a pride power play. Again, we just want to ask everyone watching on Twitch, give us your three stars of the game. We'll take that into consideration as Sam and I put in our votes later in the period. And taken away by Mary Parker now. She gets some room with the circle, tries to go with the forehand, sticked out of there by Newman. And allows for an opportunity for Sheriff to carry it in for Buffalo. Four on four is over. As Bender comes out of the box, it's back to a standard power play for the Pride. And in comes Wolfiler. Forced wide to the circle, now trying to turn behind the cage. And gets it free to the defense. 
Lexi Bender from the blue line playing a little catch with Lauren Kelly. She winds up a shot through the low slot. Couldn't get a deflection, but Bender gets the rebound. Still able to set up now are the Pride with a minute six remaining on the power play. 8.25 left in the period. Bender looking for a shot again. Comes free. Backhand try just skipped wide of the red line there. Mary Parker again waiting. Who else would it be? And Bender back again. Blue line looks to work further down low. Lauren Kelly with it now. Everyone jostling for position. And Wolfheiler there from a bad angle right into the glove of Newman as that shot fired by Kelly. Boston still with control. Final 30 seconds of the power play now. Wolfheiler from the circle dishes it back. Kelly again, bad angle shot. Caught all the way and held by Newman. Good on Newman to hold that. I think her team needed a reset. And by her being able to corral that puck and then stand up tall and make sure it didn't bounce out. Get some fresh legs on the ice. A reset for the Buttes. And Dempsey able to win that faceoff back. It's a new defensive pair out there. That's Mastel and Wren. And Wren has it. She walks the blue line, as does her partner. And down low, one-timer from the circle. Brand trying for that fourth goal of the contest. We're into the final 10 seconds now. Buttes haven't been able to clear. Again, going to be held in by Mastel. In the final five seconds, just looking for a shot. Now she will take one through the slot. Couldn't quite get the deflection by Dempsey. And out of the box there comes Bowering. I'm sorry, Brown. Now Pride once again down low. Pass that was intended for Brand right in front of the net, but she's able to pick it up there at the corner for Tina. Big elbow there for good measure as she gets a pass off. And Wren once again fires a shot. But no penalties assessed to either side. Tina lost control of it behind the cage, but again, Buffalo cannot clear. Tina better watch out. It looks like uh, Brown took exception to that hit. Possibly wanted to do some head hunting, but Pride taking it back the other way. A good stretch pass to the left wing now for Putinia, trying to feed Dempsey back into the middle. Wasn't quite on the tape, but now she will try the wraparound. Looking for some room. Top shelf and scores! Woo! What a goal! Jillian Dempsey put it right in the corner above Newman's glove with the wraparound. And she remains the NWHL goals leader for good reason. That's a just great a goal. brutal shot by the captain. That's a great goal. You know, you have two defenders on that near post side and Kelsey Newman, but that is no match for Jillian Dempsey. So six and a half minutes to go in the third period now lead up to seven for the Boston Pride as Jillian Dempsey gets on the goal scoring sheet. And Christina Putinia get credit, got credited once again with the assist. And Pride just continuing to dig for more. Failed on the power play but able to get it even strength. Now not taking away at all by Dempsey's goal from Dempsey's goal. But again, I really am not liking this this Butte's defense. You had two defenders on that near post, and nobody was able to get a body on Dempsey and make and that. And how many good shifts have they had before this of sacrificing the body, forcing the pride to the perimeter as they're doing right now, and then it's just that one shift that breaks them down so thoroughly. Well, what I'll say is that they're good at anticipating, but particularly it's Peltier that's good at anticipating, but they're not necessarily great at shaking things up in front of net. They, did, they didn't do that for Fujimagari, and we're seeing a lot of hits in the open ice here and not a lot of whistles. Of course, there's no cross, there's no body checking here in the NWHL, no, no uh, hits in the open ice. And so you're, you're really starting to see it get a little physical here as, as we close out close to the five minute mark. And we will take uh, another commercial break as this will become a media timeout in there. So we will pause for just a bit.
And face off in the Buffalo end of the ice once again. Jillian Dempsey taking it. She wasn't quite able to win it there from Brown. And this is actually another fried power play as Bowering gets sent to the box for hooking. Trying to ring it around the horn again are the pride. And well, the combination of Brand and, Brand and Fracken able to hold it in at the half wall now. But now it's down low. Dempsey coming in, gets it back up top to the point. Soliotis firing a shot. Brand with a one-timer. What a good save by Newman once again getting right to left. As Brand had a wide open net for a quick little one-timer. Trying to get her fourth goal of the contest as we've mentioned before. And we had Marissa and Jemmy on as we were getting ready to drop the puck on this game. She came over in one of the intermissions asking if we've ever had a four goal game in a regular season game. Now, I couldn't recall one, Sam. I do believe Kelsey Colzer, though, at that All Star game in Minnesota, had four goals. Haley Skamura had a hat trick and an assist, and they were co MVPs of that, that All Star game, excuse me in Minnesota that was the year before the Minnesota Whitecaps joined the NWHL and I can remember from last year at least with this Boston Pride team there were a couple games of near four or five point games but I don't believe four goals so McKenna Brand will get sent so it'll be a good extended period of four on four here with four and a half minutes to go now in period number three a lot more open ice for these players to work with of course as the Buttes try to get something going. Here's Bowie coming in with a Kersey and some numbers. Peltier on the wing, they give it to her. And from the circle, tried to feed it back into the middle for a Kersey. But the pass broken up. And Bowie switching places now with Peltier at the corner. They try to get it out in front of Kersey's waiting there. The big body. And perhaps you may consider switching places as... You know Bowie has a very good slap shot, but also the positioning she's able to do with her body in front of the net could really reap some benefits for the Buttes as yeah. Parker taking it back in. Able to get free from the circle. She goes back in for it again and did it go over the line? No, it didn't. It was That close. puck maybe split the red line by my viewing. Parker thought she had one. That was But once close. again, just snake bitten in every possible way. <laughs> but we play on and good on the Buttes to play on. Unfortunately, they couldn't keep it in their offensive zone. And back at the point now from the half wall. They get it free as a Buttes player is out of the box. This becomes a brief power play for them. As McKenna Brand still sits, they've got 30 seconds left on it. 3.09 to go in period number three. Sullivan takes it away for the pride there. She's over the blue line, almost gets tripped up and does lose control. The puck could be a three on two back the other way. If the Buttes hurry, going through the middle is Guillen. Has Klimas over with her, fires one softly in on Solander. She's able to stick it aside. But still buzzing is Buffalo in the corner. Getting to it now and going around is Delay. She looks and fires from the right pad, almost got it through. But Solander able to get over. And now Brand is out of the box and that will do it back to even strength hockey. Good shot fired by DeLay again off of the shins of Sullivan. And these special teams chances, they have still been coming for Buffalo, but again, just nothing able to do. As this one pushed up, Lang trying to get it from Peltier. And Buffalo at center, Lang still all over them on the forecheck. Good pressure being applied by this second line for Boston. And now Peltier gets it back in with a big slap shot. She dumps it around the boards as we're into the final two minutes of play here. Now in the near side corner, a couple pride teammates trying to take it out from the half wall. Taves couldn't quite get it clear right in front of the Boston bench. It's still battled for Peltier again, flips it into the corner. But no Buttes teammates were home as Franken will get to it and it's cleared. And Lang from the corner now. Good pass there to the opposite circle for Fratkin. She tries to get it out in front. The no -ply pride players could get a stick on it. We're into the final minute 24 now. Akersi racing up ice. Back pinching the lone defenseman with Soliotis able to break up that pass there from Bowie. A little love tap between the two of them, I think, at the opposite end. Good idea there by Akersi, but just not able to get that pass to a place where Bowie could do anything with it. Also, in part, that's because of the Boston pride on the defense there, able to interrupt that pass. 
And a good stretch pass again for Puccini as she's got multiple points in this game. Tried to fire one from the half wall, but Guillen well ahead of her. But she gets back her own intercepted pass and couldn't get one through Newman there. Final minute of the period. Butte's just trying to go home with a little bit of pride here in the final couple of shifts. And from the half wall, Dempsey just trying to collect it. Mastel there to help out as well. And not much more you can say besides just a very dominant opening home weekend for the Boston Pride. As they get one ahead to Brand, could she possibly get a fourth one this late in the game? Fires one through, but wide of Newman. She wants one. And again, she gets to it in the corner. Only has 13 seconds to work with, though, as that one scooped up off of the ice by Newman. Another try. And you can see her smiling, McKenna Brand, going up to each of her teammates, possibly saying, I'm trying. <laughs> and what could be the final face-off of the game in the Boston and with 11 seconds left, quick shot right off the draw there from Parker. It was a good effort as McPherson takes it back and will just backhand it through to the Boston end. And for 60 minutes of Warrior Ice Arena, that will do it. A clean weekend sweep for the Boston Pride in both games in rather dominating fashion. They take this one by a final score of 8-1. to one. Three goals coming from McKenna Brand. One from Jillian Dempsey. One from Alyssa Wolfiler. Emily Fluke with two as well. And a lot of candidates to choose from, at least from our perspective, for the three stars in the game. Erica, I will let you go first in that regard. Yes, well, you know, we were able to send over our three stars, and we really liked the game of um, uh, Marie-Jo Peltier, not only t today, but all weekend. Um, also, you can't deny that Brooke Stacy has been a great Absolutely. element for this Buffalo Buttes team. They got the win at Connecticut, but struggled this weekend here in Boston. Then Emily Fluke sitting on two goals with a new team. Got to, you know, love a veteran of the league. And finding, dating back to yesterday, also very good defensive play. Finding her way on a new team, although she's a veteran to the league. But then, of course, McKenna Brand with a hat trick, and then she wanted some more. That's our first star. Very deserving four stars from this other team. So Boston, they improve to 3-0-0 on the season. Buffalo, they fall to 1-2-0. And both of these teams definitely know rest as they go right back at it the very next weekend. And Boston coming up for them the next two weekends in a row, all two and twos at home here in Warrior Ice Arena. If you're in the Boston area or close to it, definitely come out and check a game in person. And if not, we will be right here for you on Twitch TV. We appreciate all the comments, all the viewers over these last couple days. And Erica, if the fans want to catch uh, some more action for you, you will be joining me here on Future Pride Games, but also as part of the Connecticut Whale broadcast. That's right. I'm double dipping. I will be on all of the Connecticut Whale home games and then for nine of the 12 here with you, Sam. So we're excited, but we're going to get the official three stars. Alyssa Wolfiler credited with the third star. She had a goal with a very beautiful shot this game, a couple good stick moves. And in line with our second star, Emily Fluke. There goes Flukey. And I don't think too much debate over the first star for this <laughs> game. A hat trick in just one period of work, McKenna Brandon. She was definitely trying to add a couple more to that resume. But a great broadcast, a great game. Great game, an 8-1 win for the Boston Pride. We hope you all enjoyed it on the Twitch or even watching here in person. But on behalf of Erica Ayala, I'm Sam Fryman signing off for today's game, and we will see you next weekend as the Pride will be right back here at Warrior Ice Arena.